this is going to be a question and answer video about replacement theology and a balanced view on the Jews. The quick answer is that the church has not replaced Israel. Just because we have been brought in on some spiritual promises does not mean we get the physical promises given to Israel. Even in Paul's epistles, he makes a distinction. He says in uh, 1 Corinthians 10.32, Give none offense neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. So there he's made a distinction. Jews, Gentiles, church of God. And also, in Christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile. Now this is spiritually speaking. Physically, you still are what you are. But in Galatians 3, 26 through 29, it says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So spiritually speaking, you are no longer a Jew or Greek if you're saved. Proof that this isn't referring to physically is that it says there is neither male nor female. So obviously you still are a man or a woman after you get saved. And physically, obviously, you're still a Jew or a Gentile, whatever you are. Now we are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. But remember, Galatians chapter 3 is about spiritual things and not physical things. So to say that the church replaced Israel, when in the Old Testament God was dealing with Israel under a kingdom of heaven set up, a physical kingdom, and he's dealing with the church under a kingdom of God set up, a spiritual kingdom. To say that we've replaced them, when you take that into consideration, that really makes no sense. The physical land belongs to the nation of Israel. The physical land has nothing to do with the church. We operate in the kingdom of God and are not concerned with a physical kingdom of heaven. The proof is in the scriptures that the physical land belongs to physical Jews. And it's over and over again in the Old Testament. In Genesis 12, 7, it says, And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord and who appeared unto him. Then in Genesis 13, 14 through 16, it says, And the Lord said unto Abram, After that lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward, for all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed for ever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Genesis fifteen five through 7 And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. The fact that God shows us the promise went to Abraham's physical seed, Isaac, this shows it has to do with Abraham's physical seed, not just a spiritual. Genesis 26, 1 through 4. And there was a famine in the land, beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went into Abimelech, king of the Philistines, into Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. The same thing happens with Jacob. So you got Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. The Lord confirms that the promise is extended to Jacob, who is Israel, and his sons, which are the twelve tribes, in Genesis thirty five, ten through twelve. It says in Genesis thirty five twelve, and the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee I will give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. When it comes to the church getting in on Abraham's promises, 
It has to do with us getting the promise of righteousness by faith, which has to do with spiritual things and not physical things. The chapter, the replacement theologians used to preach their false doctrine is Galatians chapter 3, but they ignore the fact that it's about spiritual things. The Old Testament alone gives proof after proof that God will once again deal with Jews, the nation of Israel. I mean, look at uh, Ezekiel 39. It's yet in the future. hasn't happened yet. And look what it has to say about Israel. In Ezekiel 39, 6 through 7, And I will send a fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So will I make my name make my holy name known in the midst of my people, Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name any more. The heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Now look at Daniel. Daniel 9.24, referring to that future tribulation. Daniel's 70th week. It says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. What is his holy city? Jerusalem. If God is done with Israel, then why does he go back to calling a city holy? During Daniel's 70 weeks, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. In the context, who's the people? Israel. Isaiah 10, 20 through 22, and it shall come to pass in that day. Notice the phrase, in that day, that puts you in the context of that future time. In that day, that the remnant of Israel, and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob, shall no more again stay upon him that smote him, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. In truth, the remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. Throughout the Old Testament, it's very, very clear that there is a future restoration of Israel. And it isn't just the Old Testament, but also the New Testament. I'm going to show you the verses that will prove that replacement theology is false, and I'm going to show you the verses that give you the balanced view on the Jews. Romans eleven twenty five. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So someone who believes God is done with Israel would be wise in their own conceits. Romans eleven twenty six. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So notice it says, all Israel shall be saved. This can't be referring to me and you and the church because we're already saved. Now verse 27. And also look at how it says, turn away ungodliness from Jacob. I mean, Jacob? How is it talking about the church? Romans eleven twenty seven, For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. He said, when I shall take away their sins, this can't be referring to us. In the body of Christ, our sins are already taken away. Now here's the balanced view on the Jews, Romans eleven twenty eight, As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. Concerning the gospel, the Christ-rejecting Jews are our enemies. They deny that Jesus Christ is God. They don't believe the gospel. Any Bible believer knows this. All of the Bible-believing dispensationalists that are painted as Jew worshipers know that the Jews are enemies to the gospel. I know that the Jews are enemies to the gospel. I don't worship the Jews. I know that they're bound for hell if they don't trust Christ. To, to say otherwise about, about us is complete slander. To say that we believe they're all going to heaven, that's complete slander. I don't believe that at all. That's ridiculous. Just because someone like John Hagee believes that doesn't mean everyone who believes in the restoration of Israel believes that. And I personally don't even know if John Hagee believes that. I've just heard what they say about him. I never got into him. 
But that is a false gospel if he does teach that. So the Jews are our enemies concerning the gospel, but they are beloved for the Father's sake. That is the Father's as in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Israel is not the church, and the church is not Israel. The church leaves, and God goes back to dealing with the Jews, and that is why it's Daniel's 70th week. That is why it is the time of Jacob's trouble. During this time, saints aren't put into the church, which is his body. The body is gone at that future time. The Christ-rejecting Jews today are going to hell if they don't get saved. That is obvious. Nobody's denying that. They are beyond wicked today. That's obvious. I mean, read the Old Testament. There were times when they were beyond wicked back then. I'm aware that uh, the Israel of today is not of God. And this doesn't mean there won't be a faithful remnant in the future tribulation time period where God is dealing specifically with Israel. For this reason, we shouldn't go against Israel because that is their land which was promised to them. They aren't given the land because they're good, but because of the promise to Abraham. And none of these promises f fully come to Israel until the future. I mean, there's nothing I can do right now when it comes to getting them their land. I mean, that's not my focus anyway. Our focus should be on getting the Jews to accept the gospel, to believe the gospel. Like I said, it's about a kingdom of God, a spiritual kingdom, not us setting up a physical kingdom of heaven. Romans eleven twenty nine for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. So what he said to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, he didn't just take those promises and give it to the church. Is what I'm trying to say. I don't look for proof outside of the Bible to confirm the Bible. But if a man wanted proof, he could look at Israel today. Israel is still there and still the center of attention. If God promised the land to the Jews in the Old Testament and is dealing with them again in the future and giving the, them the land promised to Abraham, then why would I go against them today other than, you know, saying that they are enemies to the gospel? But they are beloved for the Father's sake. Like I said today, it's not about a physical kingdom of heaven. That's not my focus. My focus is about the spiritual kingdom of God. Our main concern would be getting the gospel to them. Now, Romans eleven twenty five. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, and to the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So if Israel is the church, then the church is blind. Are we blind in part? Notice that the verse says they are blind until, until what? The fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So that shows that there will be a day when Israel will not be Christ rejectors anymore. They're so against the elect in Matthew 24 being Jews because they say the Jews are Christ rejectors. But there's going to be Jews in the tribulation that come to the knowledge of the truth. And then it says in Romans eleven twenty six, And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. All Israel shall be saved. Once again, it can't be us, because we are already saved. It says, turn away ungodliness from Jacob. That isn't the church. We've already got our ungodliness taken away. Jacob is Israel. Why, is it called, why would it call us Jacob? Romans eleven twenty seven. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. My sins are already taken away. If the church is Israel, then how are we enemies to the gospel? It says, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. Now, Romans 9. This is another proof. Romans 9, 3 through 5. Paul says, For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises, whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. Paul is showing you that God still acknowledges Israel. Israel was, was still seen as, as Israel. Another verse they used to prove the church replaced Israel is in Galatians 6. 
Galatians 6, 15 and 16, it says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. The Israel of God are Israelites that have become a new creature in Christ, even though Israel is blind. They are blind in part. Some Jews still get saved today. And if they don't, then they go to hell just like a lost Gentile. But notice, it says, In Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. The Israel of God is those Jews that have become a new creature in Christ. Replacement theology teachers make it seem as if we believe the Christ-rejecting Jews of today get some type of free pass. That's a complete lie. Jews have to believe the gospel to be saved just like we do. The fact that the Jews are wicked today doesn't have anything to do with the fact that there will be believing Jews who will have their eyes open to Jesus Christ in that coming day of trouble. The fact that the Jews are wicked today should not make you forget the promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The fact that Israel is so wicked today and enemies to the gospel goes right along with what the Bible said about them in Romans 11. But this doesn't change the fact that the Jews are going to have their eyes opened. There's a time coming, like we've said, Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble. This is where they will realize they crucified their Messiah and they will turn to him. In the verses that prove Jesus isn't done with Israel, they're endless. I mean, look at Leviticus 26, 42 through 46. Look at the entire chapter of Isaiah 4. Look at, at Isaiah chapter 4. It says, And in that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our approach. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy. Even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem, when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night for upon all the glory shall be a defense and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a covert from storm and from rain i mean the verses would keep going and going forever i believe that the new ifb who teach replacement theology i do, I do believe they read the bible i do believe they memorize the bible but they are so far gone on Bible prophecy because they can't see the restoration of Israel. I believe they are saved and I believe they have good sermons when they aren't teaching on prophecy and other certain doctrines here and there. But when it comes to this topic, they are way off. The fact that Israel is going to be restored will show up over and over again throughout the scriptures. This teaching leads to being an anti-Semite. And I know that they say they're not. I know. But I have listened to them. For years, they can say they love the soul of Jews all they want. If that's true, then why do they mock and criticize the Jews every chance they get? And like I said, they are enemies to the gospel. They are. But they are beloved for the Father's sake. And why would we go against Israel today and side with other heathens who are also Bible-rejecting Christ, denying any Christ? You know, I mean, you got the people going against the Jews. I mean, they're not saints either. They're not Christians either. Why, I mean, why would you side with them? God said the land belongs to Israel. Sure, the Jews are enemies of the gospel today, but they are beloved for the Father's sake. They may be wicked, but the land is still going to them. And the ones who are in that land in the future will worship Jesus Christ. The book of Revelation itself, I mean, it proves that God is not done with Israel. I mean, what's up with the 144,000 who are sealed out of every tribe of Israel? Why would God fool with sealing a bunch of people out of the tribes of Israel if God's done with Israel? 
Why is there a temple in Revelation 11? A physical temple. Why does Jesus call the physical temple the holy place in Matthew 24 when he's, you know, when it talks about the abomination of desolation and the Antichrist is going to sit in the holy place? Why does Jesus say in Matthew 24, 24 concerning the future tribulation time period to pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, when the Sabbath is said to be a sign between him and Israel? The Sabbath day is for Israel. The future Time of Jacob's trouble is for Israel. Daniel's 70th week, it's, it's for Israel. I just don't see any other way around it. I've looked at both sides. I don't see how they can honestly come up with this. They have to have this to teach the post-trib pre-wrath rapture doctrine. 